you want to survive in the streets, you need to be like me. Now, I know a lot of people say things like, Jared, your Jeep's excessive, your guns are excessive, there's too many different accessories on your gun, but what I say is what some people call over the top, I call barely adequate. And today, guys, we're gonna talk about all of the different things you must have on your rifle in order to not be killed in the streets. Let's get into it. So first, we need to have a gun like this. It's gotta look exactly like this. So we need at least one SBR with a giggle switch. That's a must. You have to have an aftermarket trigger. We need a flared magwell, minimum, super important. We need a good stock. We need a sling. If you don't have a magnifier that you never plan on using behind your red dot, what are you even doing? We need a yeah, red dot really in front of the magnifier. The under the magnifier, I get a lot of hate on the internet for my guns all the time. Every time I do a video and I'm running around with one of my rifles, somebody is going to ask where I'm going to put the kitchen sink on my rifle. And the reason they say that is because, like this idiot just told you. They assume that because I have a lot of different gear on my weapons, that all I'm trying to do is add unnecessary crap to my gun rather than have a purposeful build. And I know it might seem like we're beating this topic to death because we did just release a video about four guns that everybody should own and the intentionality behind building guns. But when you look at rifles like mine, they are built with a purpose. Now that purpose may not align with you and that's perfectly fine. It doesn't necessarily have to align with exactly what you would find is a perfect build for yourself. But there's two things that are happening here. One, people get sucked into that trap of comparison where they're like, okay, either this dude knows what he's doing because he's got all this stuff on his gun, or he doesn't know what he's doing because he's got all of this stuff on his gun. So the first thing I wanna encourage you guys with is don't just watch YouTubers and I, I freaking hate that term because I don't like being called a YouTuber. I like helping people. I want to help people through media. That's what I see myself doing, but I digress. But don't just look at people on YouTube channels and say, oh, this dude's got a laser, a light, all kinds of extra crap on his rifle, and I guess I need that too. Don't do that because the reality is my needs with my guns might be very different than what you need with your guns. And the only way you're gonna determine that is by determining that, and that is yet to be determined if you are just setting out on building your first rifle or trying to build a purposeful rifle. So today, the only thing that I would like to accomplish from this video is to simplify how I think you should build out your rifle. And there's three things that I think every single rifle that you own should have. And I would also argue that it's not the best move to move on to another build until the rifles that you have have these three different things and they're very simple now the first one which can be often overlooked depending on who you are what your background is what your experience levels are with firearms is a sling this is a critical piece of equipment so when i talk to people who are looking at buying a rifle for the first time or building a rifle for the first time the first thing that i tell them is we need some sort of sling don't overlook this. Slings are for more than just holding the gun to your body. They can be stabilization devices, but above all, they are holding a gun to your body. When you're trying to work with your hands, when you're trying to climb over stuff, this is what is going to keep that gun safely on your body. It's very important. So again, I see a lot of AR-15s, especially on the range, that people don't have any kind of a sling. And I think that they just assume that they can just lay it down on the ground. We want to keep our guns in our control. We want to keep them under control and a sling allows you to do that. Now you don't have to go crazy. We don't have to have crazy fancy slings. All of my guns have a two point sling because it just gives stability to the gun. I'm not saying that the way that I have them is the only way to do it. You can experiment. You can watch a thousand different videos, you can talk to people that are a little bit ahead of you on their journeys. And I'm sure you can gather some good intelligence on that so that you can make a good decision for yourself. The next thing that is obviously important, and this is one of those things that you're gonna kinda go, duh, well obviously we need this, it's some way to aim your rifle. And typically I would say that should be some sort of a red dot. Red dots are very inexpensive typically. You can get them anywhere. There's a million different types with a million different functions, but at the basic level I think that if you don't need magnification, you should be running some sort of a red dot, some sort of an optic that gives you a dot. It could be holographic or just a regular red dot. Um, night vision settings aren't necessarily a requirement. 
unless you see yourself owning night vision in the future. And if you do, you should look for an optic that has some night vision settings. But obviously, being able to aim our rifles and put rounds on target, that's a really good thing. That is important. The other thing is you could run some high quality steel iron sights. If that's all you can afford right now, you could run some sort of a backup sight like even Magpul, MBUS sights, flip up sights, things like that. You will be able to aim your rifle effectively with sights like that. Now the irony of that is if you get into high end iron sights, typically they're going to cost about as much as a budget red dot. So you just have to decide there whether you want a red dot or iron sights. So we've got the sling under control at this point. We have the magnet or the optic under control at this point. The next thing that I would say is a weapon light. And I know you're seeing two weapon lights on this gun. There's a very specific reason for that. We'll talk about it at the end. But a simple weapon light, something that illuminates the areas around you is very important. And when we get into the world of weapon lights, it is very easy to spend a lot of money. You can get into Surefires or Cloud Defensive or Mod Lights, things like that, and you can easily wrap six to $700 into a weapon light, but you don't have to. You can do something like this X300V, which has white light and infrared light. It's got great output. It's simple controls. There's no wires, no mess. I just clip it on. It's technically for pistols, but it works great on these rifles as well. You can do something like that. I know that Inforce has some lights that are very budget friendly and so does Streamlight. So you don't have to go spend a ton, but people often overlook a weapon light. And I think that that is extremely, extremely important. Now, some people are gonna question, well, why would I need a weapon light? And there's all kinds of other misconceptions around weapon lights, but the reality is a lot of bad stuff happens in the darkness. And we weren't given night vision in our little eyeballs when we were born and raised on this earth. We just don't have that capability in our eyes. So if we're gonna be responsible as gun owners, we wanna be able to put rounds where we want to with identifying the targets that we're trying to identify. And a white light is what is going to allow you to do that in the darkness. Again, this video is not about which light or which optic or which sling you should put on, but that recipe is very, very, very simple. And I know at this point you guys are saying, well, geez, that's only three things. It's like, yeah, that's all you need to be effective with your rifle. You need a way to aim, a way to carry it, you need a way to see in the dark. And if you did this, if you set your gun up like that, you are already light years ahead of everybody else who's just getting into guns and it's gonna position you better. Ultimately, you're gonna be able to focus more time, more energy on training and buying ammo and supplemental gear, stuff that might help you out outside of just the gun, instead of just sinking tons of money into accessories that you just don't need. Because inevitably, as we build out these rifles, we end up changing stuff, we change our needs, we change our desires, we build another rifle, and it just can escalate on and on and on endlessly if you're not careful. And now I know a lot of you right away, and I'm gonna talk about this, are gonna say, holy cow, Jared, you're a hypocrite. Because look at this gun. This gun's got a white light, it's got a laser, it's got a red dot, it's got a magnifier, and it's got iron sights on it. And honestly, I kind of put the iron sights on as a joke for you guys, because I knew it would kind of troll you a little bit, roll your heads a little bit but it is functional. Do I need the iron sights? I would say probably not. A good quality red dot like this Spark Solar and an aiming, a laser aiming device like the Deep All D2 is perfectly fine for my needs. But in reality, when I built this 12 and a half inch rifle, all I did was put an optic, a sling, and a weapon light on it. That's how it started. Now, as I started shooting more and more night vision, I started realizing, okay, I need a potent illuminator on my gun, but I still need a white light. I still want to have a white light. So that's why even though I have an illuminator that's infrared and a laser that's infrared, I still have a white light off to the side so that I can see when I don't have my night vision because I don't always have my night vision. I also found for this particular build, there's a huge advantage in having a magnifier because a 12 and a half inch, it still has good ballistics coming out of this barrel. So I added a magnifier, but the best part is I can take it off if I want to. And I added spray paint because again, I wanna blend in in the wilderness with this particular rifle. This one is out in the woods with me out here in Southeastern Pennsylvania. So I want it to match the trains that I'm finding myself in. So I'm not saying that your build has to stop at those three items, 
But what I am saying is you should start with those three basic items. Your next immediate step should be getting trained with that rifle. Get really well rounded with it before you go into all the other stuff that can just suck your resources and your money out of your soul. So ultimately, what I'd like to see people start doing, what I hope our community starts doing, is encourage basic builds to start with high quality parts. Don't go the full budget route unless your finances only allow you to do so, but buy a quality name brand. There are plenty of budget options out there that are good quality name brands, and buy good gear, and then after you get those three and you have a good solid foundation, then you can start exploring the other areas of firearm ownership and training, and ultimately you might find yourself someday building out a rifle just like this. But if you don't, and you don't need a rifle like this, don't build it. Be fiscally responsible, be smart, train well, train smart, and ultimately that's going to lead you down the path of becoming a better defender.